All right, welcome to the very first episode of Mic Up or Shut Up. I'm sitting here with uh, my lovely wife. Hi, my name is Angie. My brother-in-law. Big boy Bodie. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife and my sister. Reagan. <laughs> so we're going to spend our time together uh, talking about politics and entertainment and life in general and just people that are dumbasses. I think that'll pretty much cover it. Sure. And well. this is literally what we do every time we get together. We just decided to record it. Exactly. Yeah, we're going to tell a story of how all this came about here. Actually, I guess we can go ahead and do that right now. Get it. So, get after it. <clears throat> I was living in Virginia, and I was down here doing some work temporarily. And my sister comes up to me one day and says that she's going on a date with a guy, and she's nervous, and she wants me to go along with her. Which she's I scared. Exactly. Which <laughs> I immediately said, uh, there's no fucking way that I'm going on a date with you and a guy so that I could be sitting at a table while y'all are making out. That is not, that is not going to happen. That is not going to be in my future. Is, yeah. Wait, is that the kind of dates that she had when you was? Is that is that you just is she just go and make out with people? Is that how she was? No, but back then I thought that was why you agreed to go out with. Her. <laughs> back then, no. women did not just go on dates with people they didn't know. Back then, yeah, it was a long time ago. Ooh, first. Boy, it was yeah. a long time ago. Twenty-five years. Yes. So what happened then? Well, so she, so she wore me down. I'm a nice guy, so she kept asking You're me. Really so not. so fine. <laughs> Woman, I told you not to disrespect me in public. <laughs> Don't so she, disrespect me in public, woman. <laughs> so she wears me down, and I agree. Against, believe me, I wasn't happy about it, but I was like, you know what? I, I'm such a good guy. I'm gonna do it. So we, so we pull up to your house. Well, wait, what was your purpose when you went on this date with her? What no, were you, that's she, a good did, question. What did she ask you to Nothing. do? Nothing. She just said she was supposed to be some type of bodyguard. See, that's what I thought. What were that's, you, that's, that, what was what, was that was what I thought, that she wanted to be a bodyguard. But then we pull up to your house, and you walk out the door, and I see the size difference between us. <laughs> and, I, and I immediately think to myself, what the hell am I going to do if this goes sideways? Blow my rape whistle? Because that was pretty much the only option I had. Well, do, do you have a rape whistle? Is that something that you carry around? Uh, I'm just curious. When you're sexy, like this, you have to protect yourself. You have to protect yourself at all times. Oh, my. So, and you know what? Actually, I've never asked you this. What did you think when you walked out the door and you saw your date and her I, brother well, sitting Well, see, the that's the thing. She didn't tell me that all of that was going down. And I get out there and I see the car full of people. I thought, you know, the first time that I asked her to go out with me, she just acted like she couldn't hear me. She turned around and walked the other way. <laughs> Legit. I had to work up the nerve for two weeks to ask her out. And when I did, she's looking me right in the face. And when I said, hey, you want to go somewhere and do something fun one time? She turned around and walked away like she never heard a word that I said. Okay, so, in my defense, I had a boyfriend at the time and I didn't want to tell you no. That's what she told me. So then, I think it was three days later, she comes back to me and says, hey, you want to go listen to Spank the Monkey at Rookies on Friday night? And I was like, where's this turnaround coming from? Because I just got slapped in the face, basically, with <laughs> silence. And I said, hell yeah, I do. But I thought it was just me and her, because it sounded like a date. But then when I get outside and I see you in the car, I'm thinking, oh, she got another dude in here. What the hell? I didn't know you were her brother. Right. I had no idea. I'm thinking... She just invited a group of people. This is not even a date. You know, I felt really shitty until I got in the car and she said, oh, this is my brother. So then I was like, okay, it's cool. But yeah, I didn't know. I thought she just brought another dude. It was just, it was three-way at that point, you know? Wait, didn't we have someone else with us? Nope. Nope. See, I just, thought no, Stacy was with yes. us. No, it was not. It was just the three I thought of us. she was. It was just the three of us. No, she wasn't there. Because... Because the reason why I remember this is because uh, I don't remember which one of us did it first, but one of us offered to buy the other one a round of shots. Right. And so I was like, all right, cool. So then one of us buys a round of shots, and then the other one says, hey, I'll buy a round of shots. And then it was back and forth every time. As soon as we got finished, I, you know what? I'll buy the next round. We just went all night long. And since there's like a, I don't know, if a size difference of five to one, I didn't last. <laughs> I didn't last. I just remember because I remember getting home and like vomiting everywhere. And mom screaming, what did you do to my son? That's, that's pretty much that's pretty much the memory. But if anybody does choose to listen to this, they don't know that I'm six foot three, 
three hundred pounds, and you are I'm about one fifty. But at <laughs> the time, five. And he's but, about but, five foot yeah, six. But yeah, but yeah. at that time, I probably because I was working construction, I was out in the sun. I was probably weighed one twenty five back yeah. then. Yeah. yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little heavy now. I'm probably maybe one seventy. I think we honest. were all a little skinnier. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, but the size difference was still the same. You <laughs> right, you're skinny, right. You might have been skinnier, but you were still way bigger than me. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I just, I just remember when when you walked out the door. I just remember thinking, what the hell did she well, ask me? She told me that you didn't just think it; that you said it. Like, you out loud said it to her. Like, what the hell do you want me to do with that? That's what she told me. That probably did happen. That probably did happen. I mean, you know. I'm not afraid to put Dukes up, but, I mean, I got limits. I mean, I, you know. So yeah, but we had a good night, though. Oh, no. Yeah, no, that was, yeah. And best of friends. Right, exactly. Now. I know. I, I mean, that's why That's why y'all got married so fast, because you were like, I have got to be. Yeah, I, I have got to have an excuse. To that to, yeah, exactly. That's what it is. I have to have an excuse to hang out with him all the time. I get it. I to get it. I had to. And we were married less than six weeks later. Right. Yep. Crazy. Crazy yep. talk. Hey, when you're in love, you're in love. That's yeah. it. You When you know, you know. That's right. That's right. What do you think of that, hon? Huh? We were a little faster. I mean, not as fast. Uh, yeah. No, I mean. What do you mean we were a little faster? It was faster? crazy, no, but, we you know, both fast. committed. It works out. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So y'all y'all got married in 97. Yes, sir. And then I meet my wife in college. And yeah. we get married a year later. We get married in 98. And then uh, <clears throat> many years later, she starts to tell me that uh, I should start a podcast because <laughs> she watches me and you. She well watches. She listens to me and you talk about stuff all the time. She says, "Man, you guys crack me up the way you make fun of people. Other people will want to hear this." Right. And I was like, "I don't know if other people want to hear this." So for a long time, I'm still I, skeptical. Yeah, exactly. I'm still skeptical. <laughs> as well. But for a long time, I resisted the idea until I don't know about a month ago. We were sitting at home, and she said, uh, you know, the, a lot of dirty dishes in the sink, and it's your turn. And I was like, fine, I'll start a podcast. <laughs> Why not? Why not, yeah. right? I got to go talk to Bodie. It'll That's be right. funner than washing dishes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> and no the doubt. other reason, actually, that we started the podcast is because uh, in 2014, I think it was, I, for my own benefit, I started to start watching uh, movies on, on in October. I was going to watch a different horror movie every night. Of the month, so I started doing that, and uh, I think I, on the second year you started telling people I was doing it, and uh, they oh, thought yeah. it was a good idea. So she started giving people the list of movies that I would watch, and then people started requesting me to just randomly, you know, they would text randomly, say, "Hey, I, I want to watch a uh, western. Can you can you recommend a western for me?" So so I started doing that, and people said, "Man, you have really great taste in movies." No, you should... not all people. Have <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's the thing. See, see, that's the thing. <laughs> It, it, so that's many, crazy because so a lot many, of people tell him that. So many people wanted me to start a podcast talking about movies. And the two of you think I have some of the worst tasting movies ever. We're going to let the audience decide. Because that's that fine. Gonna do. Because, I'm confident. Because they're going to recommend a movie and I'm going to say how bad it sucks. And then they're going to watch it and they're going to comment and tell us exactly correct. what they thought of that's it. That's correct. Yeah. Every so would you have like a point scoring system where maybe they're going to just give us like a 1 to 10 s score? So know. that you right. know, we know that if it's below five, I was right, and if it's above five, you <laughs> right. were right. Exactly. Right? Well, That's Roger good. and Ebert just said thumbs up. Siskel and Ebert. Oh, what right. I, what? Yeah, right. Siskel and Ebert. <laughs> Roger. Roger yeah. is Ebert's first name. Oh, well, right. Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So I will be the one recommending the movies every episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Although I, I was pointing out movies today that I think that everybody would like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I. Of all There's the movies people that you like too. Of all the people I know, I have the best taste in movies. That's I, all, I disagree. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I, yeah. I also agree. disagree, but I think that it's not necessarily that you like bad movies. I think that you believe movies have to follow rules. Yes. And that's the biggest problem. I don't think movies have to follow rules. I think that if it's a good movie and I enjoy it, then that's all that matters. You think they have to follow some type of lore. If they don't match up with the book, then it sucks. Or if they don't match up with the comic book, then it sucks. Or if it doesn't follow the lore of the the history of whatever it is, you know, yes. rules. I, you make rules for movies, and I don't. That's correct. I, that well, doesn't mean that you're wrong, and I'm right. It just means that's how you right. that's how you determine whether it's good or not. I I really this is how I look at it. Those people are millionaires, and so if they're gonna take my time, they have to deliver a good product. I require that a movie. Does if a movie creates, you know, each movie is its own universe, okay? No matter what genre it is, each movie is its own separate universe. So it ha so a universe has rules, 
a mythos. So if they they have to con- they What was that word? What, what, what is it? Mythos? How you spell that? M Y T H O S. Look, Normie. <laughs> look, Normie. Let the nerd talk for a second. Go ahead. So, <laughs> excuse me, sir. So, so a movie creates its own rules, and it has to follow those rules. It can't break them later on because uh, it's required to make the scene work. Whatever. No, they, once they set up rules, they have to follow them. So, yes, I do require that movies stay true to the rules that they establish for themselves. And secondly, I require that the movie be good. That's the other thing. I, I, a lot of people are like, oh, there's an explosion and a fist fight. That's all I need. But no, yes. no, that is not all That's I need. Absolutely. I require, I require plot <laughs> and camera angles and acting. I, I require a lot of things. So No, not me. All I require is explosions, a little bit of blood, maybe a little nudity, and I'm happy. <laughs> well... That's what that's, makes us that's different. The that's what makes us different. Yep. We are very different people. Yep. It's, it's strange that we get along as well as we do. It is. But that that's only on the movie off. topic. No, no. Only because that's right. Everything so else. Well we, everything every else. Yeah. You know what that's I mean? right. Everything else we get along. We seem to agree on, on a lot of things. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. But I think your movie's thing comes is far back, though. That's all right. Well, you know what? We'll circle around back to movies because toward the end, I'll uh, I'll have a recommendation. I'm gonna come out the gate swinging too. I got a, I got a good one for everybody. So, oh, is it the mayonnaise movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll get back to that. Yeah, we'll come back to that. So, <clears throat> one of the things that we're gonna do in this podcast is we're gonna make fun of uh, millennials and Gen Z. I, I foresee them having a hard time getting through this podcast. Man, the world yeah. is in deep, yeah. deep stuff these days, right. ain't it? I mean, it's yeah. that's yep. Yeah. That's how I know Crazy. that there are other dimensions. I can prove it right now. Oh because God. we are in the bizarro dimension. We are in the stupid dimension. Right. Yeah. Like aliens yeah. walking among everything, us. Yeah, everything, really... is, everything is screwed up in this dimension. The, the dimension where America did not decide to, hire, to elect a president with dementia. That's the other dimension. Hmm. <laughs> and then find I, ways to defend that dimension every day. Right. Every yeah, day. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's unreal. Yeah. Right. And, you know, we still can't find the cocaine. <laughs> we don't have any idea. No, we found the cocaine. the cocaine. We can't find the owner. <laughs> right, right, right. We have no idea. No, no, we Absolutely. can find the owner. No, no we, we can know, find the owner. We know. The Secret Service can't find exactly the owner. Exactly who owns Hunter's right. cocaine. I guarantee, <laughs> I guarantee you, there was a Secret Service agent that walked up to that cabinet and went, fucking Hunter. I did not sign up for this. Now I gotta pretend like there's no cameras in this room and I can't figure out how to do my job. Right. Yeah. Now we have yeah. to act like we're stupid. Yeah. Because we can't say this is Hunter's cocaine. Right, exactly. Right? Exactly. So sad. But if you got the big guy, you know, as long yeah, as you got the right. big guy looking out for you, you can do like you want. Yep. Meanwhile, you got an ex president who's being indicted for the same exact thing that the big guy also did. You remember uh, the documents they found no, yep, in his yep. in his garage in the Corvette yep. and everything as well? Why are those not being indicted? Well, let's be honest. Every single president who has ever lived has probably had oh, has probably because, had. because they're allowed to. Right. Yeah. As soon as the president waves his hand over a document and says this is no longer sealed, no longer top secret, then it is. Right. It doesn't require Congress, it doesn't require a vote. If he says this is unclassified, then there it is. It's done. So why would you even pursue that in any way other than weaponization of the DOJ? That's correct. So stupid. That is correct. Yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how this is going to play out. I, I, well, let me say first of all that uh, I don't want Donald Trump to be president again. I mean, I am glad that Donald Trump was president the first time. He did a lot of good. Actually, the, the, the greatest thing about Donald Trump being president is that it showed a large portion of the population that you don't have to settle for the status quo. You don't have to be an establishment candidate that you vote for. You can you vote for an outsider. And in fact, I think that's the only... I don't know that I would ever vote for an establishment candidate again. You know, right. they're, all, they're all a bunch of corrupt bastards. Right. I mean, right. every one of them. I'm talking about Democrats Absolutely. and Republicans. Yeah, it doesn't matter what color tie you wear. Yep. You, they're yep. all They're all corrupt, corrupt bastards, yep. And I call them the 80-year-old millionaires club. Yep. Because they've been there for so long. They know exactly how to steal from you. And they know exactly how to hide it. And now the worst part is they don't even have to hide it. They do it right in front of you, and they don't care. That's right. Yeah. What are you gonna do about you know? it? Yeah. yeah. What are you gonna what do? You about gonna do? That's what they do. Them how to vote. Exactly. No. Exactly. Yeah. So my opinion on Donald J. Trump is I believe that Donald J. Trump was and is currently the best president that this country has ever seen, ever Correct. in the history of this entire country. That's what I believe. Sure. Now, people on the left side will say, 
oh, well, you worship the orange man. He's the orange messiah. <laughs> and that's a bunch of crap. Because I also believe, not only was he the best president this country's ever seen, he's also the most arrogant, pompous right. idiot that I've ever seen right. as well. But those two things, in my mind, they don't relate. You know what I mean? Yes. I care about the job you do for this country and putting this country first. And as far as for you sounding like an idiot on a microphone, I don't care. Right. Because we got one right now that's not doing either one. He sounds like an idiot on the microphone. Right. And he's screwing this country bad. So. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, don't mm -hmm. get me yeah, don't get me wrong. Donald Trump's a douchebag. He is a complete douchebag. You can't be you can't right. you can't not be a douchebag and become a billionaire. Right. That's actually we one don't of the disagree. Problems. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he is but, definitely not my favorite person. Right. I mean, I'm glad he was president cuz he postponed a lot of crap that we're going through now, but he doesn't need to be the guy coming up. Uh, you know, and in fact, I don't even know if he'll I, I don't know the way things are going right now. It's so strange. I mean, there's a good chance he's going to be in the middle of a trial. Yeah. Whenever we, he's running well, for election. So I was uh, talking to somebody on Facebook the other day that says, yeah, he's he's probably going to win the nomination unless he's in jail. Because they very well, with the venue, the jurisdiction, yeah. putting all of their own people on juries and putting all of their own <laughs> people in places to do the prosecution, right. they very well could get a conviction, even on a crap, stupid case that they right. have. And that's how the government works these days, especially in the criminal se sector like that. When when the DOJ is weaponized, they can do whatever the hell they want. That's right. So, well, his, it's possible he won't win the nomination because he may be in jail. That's right. a possibility. Actually, what I'm what I'm thinking is going to happen, and uh, if I'm right, I called it way ahead of time because the first debate is going to happen at the end of this month, and Donald Trump has already said he's not going to be in any other debates. So. Uh, I've been watching interviews with almost all of the candidates, all the nominees right now, and uh, they're all crap. I mean, they're all just a bunch of corrupt bastards that are for the war in Ukraine. I mean, it's just the same old song and dance, except for one. Oh my God. Yeah. Before you get to the one, yeah. did you see what Mike Pence said? Mike Pence Not is as garbage, no. <laughs> bro. That dude yeah. is hot garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to tell you, he's trash. With the whole, it's not my just, concern comment? Is that no, what you're talking he, about? he started saying things like, Trump should be in jail, and this is yeah. why Trump shouldn't have yeah. did this, and that shouldn't have, I hope they evict right. him, and I hope that they, what are you doing? Yeah, he's an idiot. You were right there next to him, idiot. Yep. If he goes, you probably go too, you dummy. Yep. I, I'm gonna, uh, that dude's garbage. No, he is garbage. He is total garbage. But the re yeah, he's total garbage. Let me, let me tell you, the funniest thing, uh, there's a uh, YouTube channel called Awaken with JP. Okay, a guy's hilarious, and he'll do a lot of skits where it's like him talking to himself, you know, as a different person. And the funniest thing I ever saw him do was uh, right after Donald Trump announced he was definitely running for president again. He did a video where he pulls up to a guy and he says, uh, "Hey, did you hear Donald Trump's running for president again?" And he says, "No, never heard of him." But you never heard of Donald Trump? He goes, "Oh no, yeah, I heard of him. I thought you said Mike Pence." <laughs> <laughs> right. And that Absolutely. pretty much sums it up. That pretty much sums it up. So tell us so, about so, okay. your guy. So the Let's one guy, the it. guy who I think is uh, the ringer, is Vivek Ramaswamy. Okay, I've been watching this guy for a while. I've been watching interviews with him. He, everything that comes out of his mouth is what I want to hear. So you sure you're saying his name right? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. If I'm not, well. But, doing uh, the yeah. best you can. Yeah, right? I'm doing the best I can. Yeah, <laughs> Vivek Ramaswamy. So I'm calling it right now, guys. I th there's a good chance that he's going to be the nominee. I really do because if Trump stays out of the debates and the other jackasses who say corrupt shit are talking against this guy, who whenever you answer him, when he, when he's asked a question in every interview I've seen so far, he answers the question. He doesn't try to change the subject or skirt around and you know that double speak and all that. No, he actually answers the question in depth, and directly. So I feel like once the debates happen and he speaks that way, it's going to make everybody else look like garbage. And Donald Trump's not going to be there to defend himself or, you know, or counter. So I think there's a good chance that he's going to shoot up in the polls. Right. We're going to, right. We'll see. I, that's well, my I've hope. heard a couple of the things that he had to say, and I like what he's saying. I'm not sure yet if he can actually accomplish the things that he's saying he can accomplish. That's the only question well, that I have currently. I do like what he says. I do like the guy. He speaks America first, which is yep. what, that's all I care about. Yep. When the left libtards say, you worship Donald Trump. No, I don't. I worship America first. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. I want our country to be placed ahead of the Ukraine. 
I want our country to be placed ahead of any aid that we give to any foreign country. Let's take care of our veterans that fought for this country, that bled for this country, and that died for this country before we spend money overseas. Right. Let's spend it here on the people that took care of us first. That's the way I believe. And that's the way it sounds like your man is talking. So I like that. I'm with that. Yep. You know, it's, God, this world is so weird. I, you know, I, I remember when Obama, you know, was doing his bailouts and all this kind of stuff. And, and everybody was saying, oh, he spent more money than any president ever. You know, all of them combined and all this kind of stuff. And I, and I remember I used to rag on that, too. I can't believe how much money he's spending. But, you know, now that I see how much money we've given Ukraine, a country that doesn't fucking matter to me or anyone else no matter what they say nobody gives a shit about ukraine most americans never even heard of ukraine until the war started now they, they act like it's the golden nugget of democracy for some reason in the world i don't know why people think well, that's because they vil vilified putin that's yeah why. yeah they they make yeah. him look like he's the, the next hitler that wants to take over the, the the modern world right just because he wants the country right next door yeah which, which may or may be may or not may or may not be the case but right now, while it's not a NATO problem and it's not our problem, why is it our problem? Right, yeah. That's all and I, I don't think people fully understand how much money we're spending over there. Like, oh. we are not only are we providing every bullet, every bomb, every gallon of gas, we are paying the pensions and salaries of every employee of Ukraine. Like, you know, the teachers, uh, the government workers, we're paying their pensions and their salaries. Mm -hmm. We are. Right. I, that's mind-boggling that, to me. There's also... Apparently, extra money that got lost. Right, yeah. Uh, that yeah. Was Accounting errors. There, that's right? Well, we made Accident an error. Days. Oops. Yeah. It really didn't find its way into my pocket. Right. But maybe it did. Right. Right. So yeah. that's how our government well, works. Well, see, my point is all the money that we have given to Ukraine, which I don't even know uh, how many billions upon billions, tens of billions, I don't know, 100 billion. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know I don't even know now. And, I don't, it's, and it's an absurd like number. But if. A president had said, you know what, I'm going to give all of that money to the American people. I'm just going to give $100 billion to the American people. I'm going to divide it all up amongst yourselves. We'd all be I rich. mean, yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I, I don't see the problem, actually, <laughs> anymore. I mean, I would rather us get it than Ukrainians well, get the, it. Well, there is, there is an inherent problem with printing money. Well, sure, of course. Because yeah. then the economy does exactly no. what the economy is doing. That's true, that's true. The only difference in what you're saying and what's actually happening is that the money's going out of country. Right. Exactly. Yeah, Americans don't If it was to benefit. stay in country, right. we would still have the same problems with the economy, but at least we but, would have the money to be able to afford the economy that we currently live exactly. in. Exactly. You know? Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's absurd. It's ridiculous. Yep. Well, I'm going to take us off on a little bit of tangent talking about how this country is just going down the tubes. So, do you have you heard of the governor of Illinois? His name is J.B. Pritzker. I was actually going to bring that up. So, yes. I have heard of it. Okay. I have not. So, so this governor just passed a bill that non-citizens can become police officers in Illinois. Yep. Non-citizens of the United States of non America. Non-American citizens. Yes, That's correct. Non-Americans. Not non-Illinois citizens. Non-Americans. And they don't need, all they need to have is a work permit to work in the country. Yep. That's yep. all they need. And to be able to carry a gun. Yep. So, technically, somebody in Illinois could be arrested by someone who's not even a citizen of this country. Yep. Wow. And apparently, uh, California, apparently California has also passed that similar law earlier this year. Well, so I mean, I don't think we need to even well, discuss no, but, what California does well, I because mean, I call them Califidiots. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone over there is Looney Tunes. The right. whole entire state could fall off into the ocean and I would be a happy person. No, I know. I'm just saying, I mean, that's two states. My point is two states right. have passed a law that says that Mexicans can arrest Americans. And they're cool with it. Crazy. You know? I mean, I, I mean, could you imagine getting pulled over and say, like, "Can I see your ID?" Oh, uh, yeah. Can I see yours? Right. Yeah. Where's your papers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My gosh. I mean, that's unreal. every day I wake up thinking, "Oh, today's the day." I'm gonna walk outside and everybody's gonna go, "Ha ha ha ha! We fooled you." <laughs> April Fool's. Yeah. This is not how the world really is. <laughs> right. And I'm like, "Ah, oh, you got me. I really thought we had a president with dementia." Yeah. Now what's going on? We didn't really want to defund the police. We were just <laughs> yeah. kidding. Right. <laughs> So stupid, yep. man. So stupid. But yeah, there was a lady talking. We watched a thing about the governor of Illinois, and she, the, well, there was a lady talking about it too. She said the reason why that they did it was because they had so many people not wanting to be police, and so they had a shortfall of police, and so they had to figure out a way to get more police in. 
Well, if you support the police, you'd probably have more people wanting to be police. Correct. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you Kinda think like... that you're going to have people wanting to be police after the treatment that they get in the media and everywhere else when they do their job? Like, oh, no. literally, when they or like do in their Chicago. job to perfection. Well, can you imagine at the beyond. border, like, border agents are standing there, like, you can't come in and be like, no, but I want to be a police officer in Illinois. Yeah, sure, come on in. Although, that would never happen because nobody's telling them they can't come in in the first That's place. That's correct. No, that is absolutely, <laughs> so, yeah. that is absolutely correct. <laughs> That's that very absolutely correct. <laughs> well. it's, it's wild in this country, man. It really is. And it scares me. Because my kids are great, they're growing up, and they're going to have to be adults in this country. I know. And they're going to have to figure out a way to survive when it's nearly impossible to survive. And that's a tough deal, you know? Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen uh, once Gen X dies off. Because we are the last group of people who have common sense. So once we die, millennials and Gen Z will be running the world. Just imagine if there, if there wasn't us to stop them. Yeah. what the world would become. Well, so that's I why mean, it's very important to me to impart that knowledge to my children right. so that they can at least be five or six kids with a brain. Right, you know? yeah. Well, you better teach them uh, how to use weapons and uh, how to use kung fu because <laughs> kung it's going to be rough. It's going to be pretty rough by that Everybody time. Everybody is kung fu fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's wild. Tanner shooting a bow and arrow at people. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, what happened... With the cop situation is uh, two things happen. One, uh, of course, criminals don't like cops, so they've sort of. I, I don't know how the whole how Democrats have decided that cops are a bad thing. I'm not sure how that came into play. Yeah. Where, where Democrats are like, yeah, cops, fuck them. Yeah. So we'll, I don't know we'll where that figure, came from. I have no idea. But, how that happened. but the but the real problem came when COVID happened, and they wanted cops to take away our rights, tell us we couldn't go to church. And this and that. Right. Well, what happened was the good cops who were like, yeah, I'm not going to take away people's rights. They got pushed out of the force. So now all you have left in the force really is a bunch of power hungry jackass bullies. And then you have a bunch of people who fucking hate cops. So why would anyone in their right mind decide they want to be a cop? I mean, I, I, you couldn't pay it, me a million dollars. It takes a special kind, I can tell you. And I got mad respect for the ones that do. Oh, because sure. Because... Oh. It really is, especially with today's climate and the political scene that we're living in right. today. It's, it takes a special person to do that gig. Really no, does. no. I mean, yeah, we need cops. I'm not saying that. Oh, yeah, yeah we definitely need them. But necessary. But I think, my opinion is, is that the way that this all came about is they started vilifying cops for every action. Yeah. And everything that had a racial bias that they fig- felt that they could skew to a racial bias, they put in the mass media and they vilified the officer that was involved. Even if the officer did an exact, like for example, the Atlanta, Georgia one, I think it was where the guy was in the McDonald's parking lot. I don't remember his name specifically. Right, I know what you're talking about. He fights with the officers, grabs the taser from the officers and turns around and points the taser at the officer and the officer shoots him, which is perfectly fine. I'm not gonna let him tase me where I go unconscious or possibly lose control of my motor function. Right. And he comes and gets my gun and then just puts one in between my eyes. Right. That's the threat that they live with every day. But they vilified that dude. They not only vilified him, they arrested him and charged him. The DA skipped over the Georgia Bureau of Investigations and said, we don't need you to investigate. I'm just going to go forward with the charges. Skipped over the entire due process that this officer had and hung him to dry. That started it, and then there's been many cases similar to that one, exactly like that. And they're all in the media, so everybody sees it. And you got current police officers who are going, wait a minute, I don't know. (laughs) Even if I do my job perfectly, I could still end up in jail like this cat right here. Right. You know? I don't know if I want to take that chance. So they start bailing out, and that's where the mass exodus begun. In my opinion. No, well, yeah, yeah. Well, also, like, the cops in Chicago can't do anything against all these teenagers that are fucking wreaking havoc there. I mean, they're fucking losing their minds there. Yeah, they they kill more people every weekend in Chicago than anywhere else in the world. So. Yeah. What, are they, what is it, the teen thing, where they, every weekend, it's like a... Oh, yeah, no, they just, they decide to take over a certain area there. Yeah. They run amok, destroy 7-Elevens, yeah, destroy people's vehicles parked on the street. 
I wish. Yeah. Chicago's <laughs> gotten so bad that they are having shootings at funerals. Yes. Jesus Christ. Somebody that got shot and is dead, and go to the funeral, and we're going to shoot them up some more. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we'll just use that as another excuse to continue to right. shoot folks. They call that but none of that kid. makes it into the media because <laughs> oh, that's not what the left wants you to see. That's right. That's not what the powers that be want you to see. That's right. They keep all of that from you, so they spoon feed you the things that are twisted the way they want you to hear it. It's a narrative. And they don't show you the things that you need to see. Right. That's the worst part about it. The biggest enemy to this country is mass media. That's no, I agree. Imagine, I, I've thought about this quite often. Imagine if the internet had not been invented. I, I really believe that if the internet had not been invented, we would almost be in a fascist-like state with the current media. I mean, yeah, you, if all you, you have, have no, to listen yeah, to is, would, is the news on TV, man. Yep, yeah, you would have no idea what was real and what wasn't. Absolutely. What was really what was really going on? Yeah. Well, and, and it's not that everything you read on the internet is true either. So no, you really no, no, still no. don't know. I mean, you you do you take like a bit bits and pieces from here and bits and pieces from here. And you got to try to do the math to put it together and make the puzzle fit for right. yourself. Because no one entity is going to give you the entire truth anymore. It's just that simple. Yeah. You have to try to piece the puzzle together for your own self. That is correct. It's terrible. Yep. Yeah, but I'm saying, I mean, if without the internet, you wouldn't even have the option of right. trying to sure. find those yeah. pieces. Those pieces right. wouldn't even be there. You're right. Yep. Yeah, it'd be crazy. Goofy. Yep. I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like I say, I wake up every day. I can't believe this is where I'm at. I know. But <laughs> and it changed so quickly. That's the other thing. I mean, everyone's attitudes have just, it's bizarre. Oh, I we're mean, so divided? Yeah, yeah. It's, you can't, and it's kind of thing that you and I are talking about right now. We can't talk about this to anyone else because if we have this conversation with anyone else, they get angry and they want to fight. Yep. You can't, you can't share your opinion with anyone because everybody wants to fight about it. And I think... A difference of opinion is good. If you have a different opinion than I have, let's talk about it. Let's mm -hmm. discuss it. Yeah. And I think that I can discuss it calmly without losing my mind. If you could do the same, we might be able to get somewhere. You know, we might be able to maybe want to start meeting in the middle somewhere. But oh, being a grown up. You yeah. You you can't sit at the grown ups table and talk it out. Then right. you're not ever going to get anywhere. Right. Well, the way I look at it is, if you truly believe that your point of view is correct. Then you shouldn't get upset when you're in, in an argument because then you can just prove your point. You should be able to back up whatever viewpoint you have with some rational point that dismantles the other person's point of view. But and it's weird because well, this is when we start hitting on millennials and Gen Z. I guess it's Gen Z right now. My I have some I have some nieces and nephews that get so angry every time you say things. I mean, like they they get so absurdly angry so quickly over nothing i mean like I, i've said things i was like why are we even arguing right now like like one time i said uh there is there is a difference between boys girl uh, boys clothes and girls clothes i said that one time and they got i mean they were fear slamming their fists triggered. on the table yeah triggered yeah they were like there's no difference between boys and girls clothes and i'm saying yeah there is i mean why first of all why are you so upset that i even said that and secondly how the hell can you come to the conclusion that there's no difference? I mean, boys walking around in girls' clothes is gay. Okay? <laughs> there's Not no, that there's I mean, anything wrong with no, that. No, no, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing <laughs> Not wrong with that. There's that. nothing wrong with that. With that. No. We fully support everyone's opportunity to do so. Right. I don't plan. Just know that that's what you are if you're doing that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. When I say gay, I'm not trying to offend. I mean, I'm not going to offend people probably till the second or third episode. Shut the fuck up. I mean, this is just an introductory episode where right. we don't. We keep it yeah, cool yeah, yeah, yeah. Point, you know, we got to keep, yeah. keep it. Keep it down yeah. a little bit. I don't. Yeah. When I get on MSNBC, I really want to have offended somebody. Not for saying wearing girls' clothes oh is gay. God. Stop it. <laughs> You're making it to MSNBC. Oh, I believe. <laughs> I don't think that's the network I would shoot for. If I'm I don't know. I feel like if I'm on MSNBC, I, I've upset some of the right people. No, you can choose the Clinton News Network. Well, I, I could choose. I could, yeah, well, I would take that. I would Seriously, take that. this is something that I don't know about, and I asked Reagan about it, but she has no idea either. What is up with the Obama's chef? You know what? I don't know. Oh my gosh, nobody knows. I wish somebody would tell me. I don't you... remember you asked me about that. What is yes. up with the chef? The you, chef. You don't know about the chef? Saw Michelle Obama's penis. <gasps> oh, and now yeah, he's you dead. Asked me. Right. Oh, he's dead? Yes, yes, he's dead. Just like all of the Clinton witnesses, right. all dead. 
Same thing. Did he right. ask to see the penis? Well, Wait. I don't mean, I don't know. It's Michelle Obama. When did establish there's a penis? Oh, come <laughs> on, Angie. It's on the internet. I had to be that person. Just yeah. because it's on the internet yeah. means that it's true. Well, I don't know. She was dancing on Oprah. That's correct. And that thing was flopping around pretty good. You know what I mean? If she don't have a penis. She got some serious I don't know. trouble. It looked like the helicopter was taking off. I was just saying. Maybe it was a microphone, but it was an awful floppy ass microphone. You know, you say what you want. But Michelle Obama, they say, used to be Mike Obama. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. There's nothing wrong with that. No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with that. That's right. But the fact that the chef had to die just because he saw your wife's penis, that's a problem, that, in my opinion. But they're trying to say he committed suicide, just like Jeffrey Epstein. He killed himself. No, he didn't. Well, he did not kill himself. Vince Foster also killed himself. Yeah, and how about the Benghazi people? Did they kill themselves? <laughs> Sometimes you got to kill yourself. Sometimes. I mean, when, when you're up against a powerful... No, you don't have to kill yourself. <laughs> no, you never have to do that. That's not something that you ever have to do. We can't tell people to kill no, themselves. No, no, no. What are you doing? When I say you have to kill yourself, what I really mean is you have to use your political influence to make sure that a witness doesn't speak anymore. Oh, yeah, you should, right, right. Sometimes you have to have some assisted suicide... <laughs> By a politician's family. Yes, I Sometimes get Sometimes you got to shoot yourself in the head twice. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's crazy. <laughs> the funny thing about, and I know I talk about Hunter's cocaine a lot, but I really can't believe that they were able to round up 500 or 1,000 people that were on the Capitol steps on January 6th, and they can't find... One person that dropped a bag of cocaine in the White House. No, no, I got, one, I got one better. Have you heard um, the new, them looking into Hunter and all these charges he's got pending or whatever? Have you heard that it has been established that Hunter put his dad on the phone at least 20 times with his business associates? Even though Biden is saying, no, I, I never had anything to do with his business. We never discussed that. So the lawyer, Hunter Biden's lawyer, is saying, hey, what's the big deal? Sometimes it's okay to say hi to somebody. So I'm thinking, how did this go exactly? So Hunter Biden's talking business on the phone with, I, I don't know, Burisma. And then all of a sudden he says, oh, wait, my dad, my dad just walked in. He wants to say hi. I'm going to put you on speakerphone. Like, really? He just wants to say hi? There's actually a recording of the telephone conversation. Have you not heard it? He says to the guy... We expect our money, this, blah, blah. He's making demands of the fellow, right? And he said, me and the guy sitting next to me right here talking about his dad, and then his dad puts his dad on the phone. No, but the point is the lawyer is trying to say, like, oh, it's just a casual, you know, you see your son with business associates. Of course, you're going to acknowledge him and say hello. How does that work on the telephone, though? Like, I mean, you know, a grown man doesn't use say, oh, my dad just walked in. Hold on. He wants to say hi. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I never had a dad. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I certainly never had a dad who ran the most powerful country in the world. So right. I... Well, yeah. Mine didn't run a whole lot of anything. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not privileged like well, that. Well, I'll tell you this. If something comes of this whole Hunter Biden business, it'll be the first time in history that a congressional hearing accomplished something. So I'm not holding my breath. Oh, yeah. I'll be shocked. I mean... They spend a lot of money on these hearings, and they do a lot of talking and a lot of yip-yapping and a lot of showing pictures of Hunter Biden naked with prostitutes. But nothing ever, ever has happened. Right. Nothing. nothing. Even when it was the other ones in power, it doesn't make a difference who's in power. They do all these hearings, and then after the hearings are over, you never hear nothing again. It's over. That's because End the, of story. the hearings are their excuse for getting elected. Right. I mean, that they is have their, to make yeah, it look like they're is, doing that, their job. Exactly. Sure. Yep. That is their sure. justification for getting elected. Right. These hearings. They got to earn it. their paycheck. Yep. And in, in the sheep's eyes, that's what they're doing. Oh, yeah. Look, they're working hard for me. Yep. No, they're not. Yep. They're working hard for them. And they're not even working hard. <laughs> that's right. <clears throat> they're just putting all of the credit card money in their pocket and insider trading money in their pocket. And yep. Getting their free hookers and free hotel rooms. Yep. That's what it's all about. You know what we need? We need term limits on Congress. 
Whew. That's what we need. That's exactly yes. what we need. Yep. Because if you don't have somebody who's in Congress for 40 years, who learns all of the ropes of exactly how to steal your money, yep. then maybe you got people in there for a short period of time. Maybe they steal, maybe they don't, but they don't have the opportunity to do it for their entire lifetime. You know what I mean? And become so good at it that it's, you know, billions and billions. Nancy Pelosi, for example, you know the Speaker of the House, how much their salary is? I want to say it's like $230,000 a year. That may be generous, I don't know. But over her 40 years of being in Congress, she has amassed $430 million in net worth. That math don't jive, bro. You know what I mean? Yep. How do you get that kind of net worth from a $200,000 salary? I'll tell you how. You're robbing people blind. That's how. You're doing a lot of illegal shit, and that's how it's done. The whole, everybody in Washington's crooked. Yeah, she's right. 83. Yeah, I don't understand how term limits were never instituted to begin with. Right. Uh, that just, that's mind-boggling to me. The yeah. worst part about it is that we depend on the people who are in those offices to term limit themselves. Yeah, that's that's right. the only way yeah. it can get done. And who's going to do that? That's right. None of them. Yep, yeah, that's right. And yet they have term limits for the president. So somebody was smart enough to say... One guy can't run the country for this long, yet nobody was smart enough to say, and this group people of people can run it forever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. Stupid. Yep. Unless they decide to govern themselves and say, you know what, we don't, we shouldn't be in office this long. Yep. yep. Well, well, all right. So, I think we. we oh, we, we got to get to your movie recommendation. Let's talk about your movie recommendation. Okay, so. This is. You ready for this turd? <laughs> <laughs> So this it's weird. It is a weird. It is weird, but I, I enjoyed it. It was okay. Well, it definitely doesn't follow any rules. Well, we have to hear what movies. it is before we can just, talk about it. Just because you know it doesn't mean everybody else knows it. I cannot believe he's suggesting this movie after his whole rant about movies have to have rules. This movie like defies every freaking rule he wants to have. All right, let's hear the movie first, and then we beat it up. Yeah. First of all, this movie is my favorite modern movie. It, was, it came out in 2017, so I, six years ago. But of, of, you know, modern movies, this is my favorite one. It is called Dave Made a Maze. And it is a horror comedy. Dave Mayonnaise? Dave, is that what you're saying? Dave, Dave Made a Maze. Made a Maze. Dave so he made built a maze. A yes. maze. The plot of the okay. movie is that uh, this uh, guy's girlfriend goes away for the weekend. Wait, are you going to spoil it for the people no. you want to watch? No, no, okay. I don't spoil. No, no, I do not spoil. I do not spoil. <laughs> okay, so carry on. The plot is this guy's girlfriend goes away for the weekend. So while he's home alone, he uh, decides to build a cardboard fort in his living room. Okay? She returns. Yes. I saw well, this. Yes. You do. Yeah, yeah. You saw it. That's turn. correct. Yes, okay. now, hold yes. on. Now. Based on your recommendation. Yes, that's right. I remember that's right. It. And that time we can <laughs> never get back. Yes. Oh, yeah. an hour and a half of my life that will never be seen again. Yes. First of all, <laughs> we're going to let the audience decide because I promise you they're going to watch and be like, yeah, well, I'm going to have to decide with Chris on this one. All right. So, okay. so the girlfriend comes back after being gone for a couple of days and she sees this giant fort this guy's built. In, in the living room and uh, she finds out that he's actually gone inside the fort and gotten lost and now he can't find his way back out so after a couple of failed attempts to get him out she has to resort to getting her friends together to form a search party <laughs> to go into the cardboard fort and retrieve her boyfriend and I know everybody out there listening right now is saying how in the hell can there be a 90 minute movie about going into a cardboard board 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 in someone's and, living and, room? And, and, and right, how can that right. possibly be sustained it's made for 90 minutes? Two refrigerator boxes <laughs> yeah. in someone's living room, and but, the man is lost inside of it. Right, but they do it. <laughs> they do it. This movie is clever. There's one word to describe this movie it is very clever. People get murdered, and yet there is no blood. And the way they get around that is just mm, chef's kiss, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, now yeah. you get your one word to describe that same movie. No, I'm just going to say, for every person listening, if you have Googled the movie, you have wasted your time. You you spent too much time on the movie already. <laughs> already, you, you're done. You're invested. Now you got to watch it. it. My one word is turd. <laughs> <laughs> With I mean, a chef's kiss. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was cute. I don't know that it was a horror comedy. It was but, a horror comedy. Yeah, that's what you want a horror movie to be cute. 
Was no, it no. horror? I didn't yeah, well, think it was a horror. Know, like, I thought it was a stupid. Well, because people I thought were... it was more like Naked Gun 33 and a half. That's kind of the movie vibe. Oh, see, I, I didn't get that from it. No, I know it doesn't have it that vibe. It wasn't just horror. I got that, comedy it was from just it. stupidity it, everywhere you turn. It has fantastical elements to yes, it. Yes, fantastic and you, and stupidity. You, you have to admit <laughs> this, though. You're watching a movie, you have no idea what's going to happen next. Oh, yeah, there's definitely no doubt about that. No one watching that movie will have any idea what's about to happen. That's correct. I agree with that. If you want a movie where you have no clue what's about to go down, that's your, that's your movie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I love it. I love it. Well, we're going to find out. Hopefully we're somebody gonna... listens to this right, and actually and watches actually it. actually watches the yep. movie, and we'll be able to hear about it. My goal is to broaden the audience's horizon, give them movies that they have never heard of, hopefully, and movies that they will enjoy. Of course. And this, and this is one of And them. I suggest that people listening keep an open mind. Yep. And try new things. Because I did. And if I had to waste my time, so do you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, w- I will warn you, when you watch the movie, the very first scene, it looks like it's going to be a Blair Witch style found footage movie, which it is not. It's just the first scene. Uh, so keep going past yeah, the first one. Yeah, because actually, I, 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 from scene I, one I actually, I actually point. almost didn't watch the movie because of the first. Because I am not down with the found footage movies. I, I can't stand found footage. But I, luckily, I passed. I pressed on past that first scene, and uh, it is it was, one of his favorite movies. It really it is. is. Yeah. And now, if you're all wondering how to give us your opinion on this movie, we want to just let you know we have our own email address. It is Mike Up or Shut Up at Yahoo.com. That's M I C U P O R S H U T U P at yahoo.com. So, you know, give us a word or whatever. Tell us what your opinion is. If you have any questions, anything like that, please contact us and we will address it if we feel like it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. See you guys later. Big dog out. All right. That's it. See you on the next one.